Hi everyone. Looks like a donut, doesn't it? This is a yellow toroid core. According to the specifications given on this toroid core, it's useful from 10 megahertz to 50 megahertz. I've been experimenting with the toroid cores and I'm going to show you some of that here. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to show you one thing here. I worked on this uh, tunnel dipper. I made uh, videos on the tunnel dipper. One of the things I did not like about the tunnel dipper was the fact that the coils just rattled around in the top. And when you took the top off, it was pretty hard to get the top off without having coils come flipping out and going all over the place. So what I did, this is a piece of uh, thin foam packing. It's, it's about uh, maybe a quarter of an inch thick at the most, eighth of an inch maybe. But I just, I just cut a little hole there with my pocket knife and slid it in there. And then I got this bright idea. This is 1 16th inch Lexan plastic polycarbonate. It's made by other companies too, but this is uh, GE Lexan. Uh, anyhow, I cut a piece that was wider than this coil box here and as you can see I formed it you know you can bend polycarbonate Lexan and any the other Lexan products you can bend them I bent this in a vise just put it in there and pushed it over I kinda of beat on it a little bit with a small hammer too to get a nice uh, nice angle there and anyhow you can see how it's shaped so I just lay the coils down in there and then I put this in squeeze it so it fits tight push it down there we are coils all fastened in there properly uh, they don't come out and rattle, go all over they might rattle a little bit but that's okay and I put this piece of string in there I drilled a couple of holes and I just put a piece of thick string in there and tied a couple knots in it so that I can grab a hold of that and pull that right out without having to fish for it with a little screwdriver or something which I did the first time when I got it together I wanted to show you guys that so if you got a tunnel dipper you might want to do that it sure works nice so I did this experimenting that I'm showing you here with the tunnel dipper first uh, then I got out the uh, Kenwood DM81 dip meter, they call it, and I found out that the Kenwood DM81 uh, gave me much easier to find readings, much deeper readings, and fewer false dips. I did get some false dips with the tunnel dipper, and I found that the dips were sometimes hard to find. So this is the uh, Kenwood DM81 dipper and uh, I really found some neat things out here while I was working so first of all I made up this little gadget right here uh, sure is complicated isn't it little short piece over here on the, on the left side with two tiny alligator clips you can get those clips off of these little clip leads that you buy real cheap every place uh, like Harbor Freight and that you can take the clips right off of those if you want they'd be nicer too if I left that boot on there wouldn't it but I didn't I just used the clips naked anyways I was show I wanted to show you that now the reason I made this thing up like that is so that I could take this wire and I can take one of these toroids now you know each time you go through the hole of a toroid that's one turn so when I stuck it through that's a turn all right, we'll go through once more. That's two turns. We'll go through once more. And that makes three turns. So I've been using three turns for this experiment. The capacitor is 50 picofarads. It doesn't have to be that accurate. It could be a 56. It could be a 47. Uh, you're just after getting a resonant indication now there we are there's a resonant circuit capacitor with three turns around the toroid so how do we do this hmm okay here is the coil F for the dip meter and coil F uh, goes 41 to 110 megahertz so we'll put that in the dip meter there we go and then all we have to do 
I found out that they couple really good if you just lay it on the top like that. And uh, let's see if I can get in here so you can see the meter. Yep, there's the meter. Okay, now I'll turn the meter on. Okay, there we are. It's up at 110 megahertz. N normally, the best way to turn the meter on is take it away from the unit or the piece of the, uh, the coil that you're trying to dip because you want to set it first. And you want to set it about three quarters of the range there, like that. Then, now we take it. Whoa, the camera fell over. Oh well, it doesn't hurt anything. Now we take it to the uh, coil. Let me move this out here a little farther so that I don't knock that off there again. And you can see the meter. All right, now all I've done is I've just, this is a flat coil that comes with this Kenwood dip meter. This is uh, the uh, 50 to 110, it's a flat PC like coil but it works the same. The rest of the coils in this dip meter are round ones like this. That's that's what I usually see in a dip meter. But anyhow that's what comes with this one and it works fine. So alright so let's just turn it slowly and see if we get a dip. There. Whoop! I saw a dip. That's it right there. And that occurs at 42 megahertz. 42 megahertz. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, that tells us we got a good resonant circuit here. That also tells us this is an RF core, RF toroid core. So that's good. All right, so now we know. And I have found that if you take a little bitty yellow toroid core, and or a great big yellow toroid core, and you put three turns through it like that, you're going to get very similar results. So I get very similar results with this little guy or with this big guy. Another thing I've found too is I get very similar results with the red core. But the red core is not as efficient a material. It will absorb RF above its operating frequency, so it's not as good to use for the higher frequencies. This one's 10 to 50 megahertz, and the red ones are good from 2 to 30 megahertz. Now some other cores I've got here. This one here, this is for suppression of noise, and it is a power line frequency core. You can't use it for RF. Here's another one. I purchased these specially because they are power line frequency cores and I have used them where I need to suppress noise like a computer power cable you could put through that. It's got a pretty good sized hole. So you can stick the power cable a uh, Oh, what do they call those little flat USB connector will slide right through that and you can put that on a cable on a computer to cut down noise. Here's some toroids here. Here's a green one. Now I know that the green one here is a power line core. You can't use it at RF. And this one here is one that will really confuse you. It's got a red dot and it's got a ivory colored or gray colored body it is a power line core how do I know because I tested it just the way I showed you the other one I got no dip at all now one thing you can do here's a little core here that I grabbed out of the junk box believe it or not I have not done anything with this core yet all I did was put a wire in there and I wrapped it three times and I really don't need that. I have the big wire here that I could put on there, but let's, uh, in fact, let's do that. I'll just take that out. But what I'm going to show you here is you could take a toroid core that you found in your junk box or you got somewhere or you bought a bunch of them at a ham fest, whatever. You could find out if there are RF cords and if you can use them. So let's just take that little core and we'll put three turns on it. Okay, once through the hole, one turn, twice through the hole, two turns, three times through the hole, three turns, and here's my silver mica capacitor on here. This is a real complex setup, isn't it? And you can couple to it 
just like that. All you have to do is lay the wire over the pickup coil. Now, let's see. I don't see any dip. No dip at all. Just to be sure, I'm going to go to the next lower range. That's 41 to 110. This is uh, 17 to 42. It might be a little different core material and might be a little lower frequency. So we want to find that out. So let's go through that one. I want to get that down a little bit there. No sir, that is not, that is not an RF core. How about that? I was surprised. I thought that that little guy like that would be an RF core. It wasn't. So maybe that's why that little uh, transmitter you built, a uh, little one tube, uh, or one transistor QRP transistor uh, transmitter uh, didn't work, huh? Yeah, here's another one here. Got wax on it. You know what that wax tells me? That that very well could be a Heath kit. Because I had a couple, couple I had more than one. I've, I've done work on Heath kits and I've seen the wax cores like that used in Heath kit. Products. Okay, three turns. Three times through the little hole and we'll clip it on there and I'll just lay the wire on top of the coil now this is a lower frequency coil so we might not get high enough there it is very nice dip at 40 megahertz that is an RF core I can use that uh, and since I got a dip there at 40 megahertz now I wouldn't trust that to be a yellow core good to 50 megahertz but I would trust it to be a 2 to 30 megahertz uh, HF core. And the reason for that is, is it's not marked in any way. And the material, oh look at that. It is marked. Can you see the yellow dot on it? Holy cow. That means it's a 10 to 50 megahertz. If it had a red dot it would be a 2 to 30 megahertz. How about that? Okay, I just wanted to show you guys these different cores and how you can check them like that and you can find cores that you can use for RF out of the junk cores now here's a black one here I happen to know that this is a yellow core it does have a hard to see yellow dot on it I've got three loops through it and I've got it clipped here I just set this up with these little you see the little short jumper with two clips and the one clip here and the wire then goes through the core and then you got the capacitor in series with the whole business and by doing that you got something you can quick and easy change these now I don't know if this will read high enough to no I suspected since it was a yellow core that I would have to go to the higher coil which is 41 to 110 okay now let's uh, Let's get this off of here. I should set the range with it not on there. Now we'll put it back on and turn it. Well, that's odd. I was getting a really nice dip out of that a little while ago. <laughs> How about that, huh? no dip it is set up for for dipping all right let's try the lower frequency coil There we go, right there. I'm getting about 40 
two megahertz on that which is actually a teeny bit above the range but it is dipping so uh, anyhow that I wanted to show you guys about that and also about making that little holder for the coils on the uh, tunnel dipper so that's it for uh, this uh, what I would I, what would I call this playing with uh, toroid cores playing with toroid cores this is Bob 73s and good DX